Hello, my name is Oleg and I'm here with another episode of TypeScript Fundamentals and today we will be talking about generics and type parameters. As software engineers, we want to build our software systems so they not only have well-defined and consistent APIs but also are flexible and reusable. We want our components to be capable of working with different types of data. That is the reason why understanding generic types is so important. Because of simplicity of our Rainbow application, which you can find at github slash slash rainbow, we don't have an opportunity to use generics in this piece of code. So we will just come up with the example which will illustrate what generics can do for us. So I will start with sort of hello world example of functional programming, so-called identity function. All this function is doing, it takes argument and, and returns the same argument. So you would guess type inference will tell us that type of any got assigned to arguments and the same stuff for the return value. At this point function is completely usable so we can do identity we can pass a string say Oleg now type inference will tell us that we are dealing with function that takes argument of any and returns any because this is a string, we can try to get a property length and it will be perfectly fine because actually string has a length. But let's say we have a null passed here and of course null does not have length. But we don't get any warnings from TypeScript because it does not know about null being a null. It just type of any and theoretically object type of any can have a, le a length or let's say a name or anything else. This means that we have absolutely no type protection. As you can see, I have even misspelled the name property here and we were still not getting any warnings. Which is again proves that we did not have any type checking going on here. As the first step, of course, we could specify a string as input type and string as a return type. In this case, we will get a notification that type null is not assignable to parameter of type string, but at this point it is far from being generic. For this sort of input handling, TypeScript provides us a special syntax. So let's convert it back. We'll put those angular brackets here. We'll specify the type right here. Now we have this sort of a variable name. It's actually so-called type parameter. Just like functions have parameters, our typed function can have type parameters. In this case, it is letter T. So now we can use it throughout our function declaration. So we can tell that our arg should be of type T and of course it has to return the exact same type of T. We have to understand that there is absolutely no magic in this letter T. It can be O, let's say, and it will work just the same way. Let's return it to T because it's more semantic, meaning type, generic type. Now if we, let's say, pass in the object literal in our function, it will tell us right away that property name does not exist on type object literal. At this point, we have completely generically typed function. Let's say if we have a proper use right here and we are passing the string Oleg, when we hover over, we will see that signature of this function dynamically changed to this particular string. And when we access the length, it will not complain at all because string actually has a length. But if we put a number in here and we'll try to access the length property, we will see the warning right away that property length does not exist on type 8 which is a number. Just like with function parameters we can have multiple type parameters. Let's say we still want to have that O type parameter here and we're expecting another argument which will be a name 
of type O, we can freely use this reference as type annotation inside our function. Let's say let underscore name should be type of O. Now we can do some manipulations in here and make sure that our name variable is still of type O. Let's clear this up and now we'll see how we can narrow down our generics by specifying the type at the place where we call our function. Let's say we exactly know that at this moment in our application identity should take string. Let's clear this up also. Now when we pass a string our function signature is much more narrowed down because we don't see the string literal type annotation but we have a string and everything else works exactly the same because we have all those methods and properties available for us and if we put something wrong let's say some property that does not exist we will get a warning as usually. Generics are simple but powerful constructs and we will see more practical usage of it further in our course when we will be talking about classes. So now let's clean up our rainbow application since we don't actually need this code for our application right now and let's go over the stuff that we have learned today. We understood the concept of generics. We also have seen how type parameters can work in conjunction with function parameters. Please subscribe to learn more about TypeScript and JavaScript in general.